So good morning, good evening, welcome everybody. Today we do have Shannon here from Career Services and uh, Robert from LDDC, and they, they are gonna be talking to us today about uh, job hunting, job finding, networking, all sorts of great things so that when you do arrive and you start looking for a job, you'll hopefully have a bit of a leg up on that. So Shannon, if you wanna take it over. Perfect, thanks so much. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. I can see in the chat box, we have people joining us from the Philippines, from Nigeria, it looks like I can also see Mexico. Welcome, Colombia. So sorry if I've missed a few of your countries here, but this is awesome. Great, thank you so much, everyone. So my name is Shannon Amaral. I'm the Career Services Program Specialist here at Fanshawe College. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about virtual job search and networking. So the first topic we're gonna to talk about is virtual job searching. So the first thing you wanna do when you start your job search is follow a few steps. The first thing you wanna do is to really know about yourself. Know what strengths you have to offer those particular employers. That's one of the biggest things you wanna remember is what kind of skills and attributes do you, can, what can you offer that particular employer? So be clear to know a lot about yourself, be clear on what you want um, and what you can offer that particular employer. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to make sure you organize your materials. And when we talk about organize your materials, it means to make sure you start early. Job search takes time. So when you're looking for a part-time job, it can take maybe four weeks. It can take eight weeks. It just depends. But you also want to give yourself time to do your job search, to network. You want to be able to work on your documents uh, with regards to your cover letter and resume. And we'll talk about that a little bit more um, into the workshop as well. You want to find opportunities. You're going to be finding opportunities by several different online job boards. You might have people that are already here in Canada that might have some networking, or maybe they work at certain grocery stores, let's say maybe Walmart, maybe Tim Hortons, if you are looking for a part-time job while you're completing your studies. You want to make sure you apply for openings, and you want to make sure that when you're applying for these openings, you are really making sure that you've read through that job description very clearly, you've customized your cover letter and resume for that job, and you want to make sure that you follow the instructions. So if the employer is asking for you to submit an application online, you want to make sure you, you follow those instructions. If it says to attach a resume, um, making sure that it's in a PDF format, you want to make sure you do that as well. And you also want to make sure when we talk about keep a record, um, it's really important to make sure you record all your job search activities so that you know where have you sent an application to, what was the closing date, who did you attention this to. If you haven't heard back, then you can do follow up uh, within five to seven days after you've submitted that application unless the job posting clearly states do not contact them. So when we talk a little bit about knowing yourself, um, there's a few questions you wanna be prepared to kind of ask yourself. So give thought of what it is that you want to, you know, what, you, what it is that you want both on a short-term and a long-term goals. You wanna make sure that you're being strategic. Look at finding a job that's gonna help you to develop your skills, which is in the long run gonna help you build your resume and your long-term aspirations. So ask yourself, what is your greatest strength? Is there an area that you know that you don't want to work in? Is there an area that you want to learn more about? What is it that you want to do? Where do you want to go? Um, would you be considering possibly moving? So keep in mind that if you are in London um, and you'll be staying in London, maybe there are certain job opportunities that might be in St. Thomas, Woodstock, but you have to be mindful of location that not every location that you decide to apply to will have a direct busing system as well. Would you be okay to move to that particular location, maybe upon graduation? So we're still gonna talk a little bit about organizing your materials. So on the screen here, you're gonna see a template of what we use in career services. Um, the resume style format you're seeing in front of you now is what we call a chronological resume. So this is what, um, when you arrive to Canada, if you start attending our workshops, um, all this information is going to be available to you through your FOL account, which is your Fanshawe online account. Uh, once you become a student, you can register for online workshops. We do workshops on building your cover letter, your resume. We have another workshop on 10 steps to my next job, networking, 
creating a LinkedIn account, just to name a few. Um, but this is going to be the style of format you're going to want to use here in Canada. Um, so I know from many different countries, maybe Colombia, Philippines, um, you know, it might be custom in your home country to have certain graphs and, you know, charts or pictures of yourself, personal information. But in Canada, your, your resumes need to be very simple and clean uh, with not all those extras, unfortunately, because it can lead to discrimination. So talking about resume, this is something you can still do from your home country before you arrive to Canada. I can also attach a handout um, at the end of the session as well for you guys to view that as well. If you have a portfolio, maybe you're in a certain field in your home country, you can uh, provide a portfolio. You really want to have a look at your social media accounts, um, you know, even your Facebook, your Instagram um, maybe look at your accounts because employers do happen to look at social media accounts when they're deciding whether or not uh, to hire a successful candidate. If you're somebody who has a LinkedIn account, this is great. If not, maybe this is something you might want to start working on because that's really important for your networking. And when you arrive to Canada and you get a phone, uh, we often have to remind students, just remember that when you get your cell phone to make sure that you, first thing you do is to make sure you provide yourself with a voicemail so that employers can leave you a message. Another thing we wanna mention is about email addresses. We really wanna make sure that you have a professional email address um, as employers don't wanna see something like big daddy at hotmail.com. So really make sure you have a professional email address it may include your name. And lastly, really know the industry that you want to work in. Um, that is the most important thing that's going to help you in your job search. Because um, if you don't know what it is that you can offer employers, it's going to be a lot harder to, to navigate through your job search journey. So still talking about organizing your materials, the first thing you're going to want to do is research. And research is the most important thing. You want to research um, and connect yourself to make sure that you're articulating the skills that you can provide that employer. And you really want to make sure you're mentioning that in your skills section, in your cover letter, and in your resume. You also want to frame everything around what they gain by hiring you, not what's in it for you. And lastly, you really want to make sure you customize each and every cover letter and resume. It, yes, it will take time to do so, but typically your cover letter is the main source that you should be updating on a, on a regular basis when you're applying to different companies. And when it comes to your resume, it's usually the very top section of your highlights of qualification that should really be tailored um, to that particular job posting. So the best way to do so is look at that job posting and highlight all the important skills the employers are looking for and find finding a way to address that in your cover letter and resume. When you do that, you're going to make yourself stand out. You're going to make yourself more competitive. Um, and again, don't be afraid to make sure you list all your education requirements. So that includes your education and acquire, uh, requirements from back home as well. Maybe you're somebody who has smart serve food handling certificate as well. Make sure you include that in your resume as well. So we all we always want to mention, so once you arrive to Canada, every student for every program has a career service consultant um, that is tied to your program. So for example, if you're somebody going into the school, um, the faculty of business, so if you're going to the Lawrence Kinlan School of Business, you're either in a one-year post-grad or a two-year diploma program, your career consultant will be Christina Rapson. You have an opportunity to meet Christina in your classrooms as well. Let's say you have a job posting you're wanting to apply for, but you want some guidance on creating your cover letter resume. You do have a career consultant that can sit down with you to help you navigate through that process. You also, as I mentioned earlier, you can attend workshops, and it's really important. I encourage you all, um, once you arrive, to, to register for those online workshops as well. And learn how to, the most important thing we really want everyone to do is to be able to navigate social media. And LinkedIn is one thing, if there's anything um, that you haven't done yet, if you do not have a LinkedIn account, I would strongly encourage you guys to do so. Um, if not, you can wait and you can attend one of my workshops um, that I have running usually two to three times a month on LinkedIn and creating that LinkedIn profile. You want to be able to use social media because it's a powerful tool to be able to connect you guys to companies, recruiters, and those valuable contacts. 
So here's an example of Fanshawe's job board. So once you get your access to your Fanshawe online, your username and password, you'll be able to log in. And as soon as you log in, you're going to go to the very top where it says resources. And then there will be a drop down arrow. What, with that drop down arrow, the next thing you're going to select is career co-op and CCR. Once you select that, it's then going to take you to another screen, and this is where you're going to be able to see job postings. And I just have something on the next screen. I just added this yesterday, just as an example, um, if you are looking through the job board site. So this posting came directly from Fancho's job site. It was just one that I had selected. Um, when you go on that job site, you can select postings for full-time, part-time casual, it could be volunteer work, it does have it separated by category, or you can view all the postings. This was one that was posted recently, um, and it's an entry-level part-time casual position. For example, the job title stated here is Frontline Sales Clerk. It's in London, Ontario. The hours are 12 to 20 hours a week. They have two positions. And the salary is anywhere from $15 to $17 an hour. It's going to you know, provide you an example of what the job description is, what the requirements are, um, and it will clearly tell you how to submit the application. And in this case, it tells you to submit an application by going in directly to the actual location um, of this particular company. So this is what you'll see when you access the job site posting, depending on what everyone is looking for. Um, you can customize your job search as well. So on the screen here, you're just going to see some examples. There are several other um, job boards. We've just listed a few here that our team um, has found most helpful for many students. Um, so you can see there, again, the top one is the job site that I just showed you uh, previously, LinkedIn, Night Hunter, WorkforceDevelopment.ca, JobBank.gc.ca, just to name a few. Um, again, like I said, there's several others that are not listed here. There are going to be, you know, certain job boards that are best for certain results based on your uh, employment goal. Um, there's also professional association or industry sector councils that have their own job boards as well, but they may require you um, to have a membership to access them as well. The next few slides we're going to talk about is, is job scams. We really have to be aware of job scams. Whenever in doubt, like we tell students, um, especially international students, whenever in doubt, if something doesn't seem right, um, always feel free to connect with us in career services as well. If there's any mention, um, as we usually say, so if you've applied for a position, you've been granted an interview, they've asked you for your references, they've contacted your references, they've offered you an employment, they must provide you an offer of employment that outlines your job salary, your title. Um, at that point is the only time anybody should be asking you for any personal information like your social insurance number, your banking information, because that would be needed for payroll. So anyone will never typically ever call you over the phone. Canada Revenue will not call you for your social insurance number. So please make sure that you're not giving that information to anyone. We also do try to encourage you not to post your cover letters, resumes, and references um, posted on online job boards. Um, if you have a better direct way of applying to the company, which we always say, if you happen to use Indeed, and let's say you see a posting at Walmart, for example, if you were to go to the company's website and you can see the same posting on the company website, maybe consider applying to the company's website as well. That's another way of, of looking at um, potential job, you know, scams that could be happening with employment. I know there's a few questions um, in the chat. I think if it's okay, I'm just gonna answer them um, at the end if that's okay. The next section's on virtual networking. So why is networking so important? It's so important because you're seeing that big number listed in red there. Uh, more than 80% of jobs are not posted. So what does that mean? A lot of the hiring process is done through personal contacts and connections. 
Um, you know, an employer is more likely to hire someone that they know uh, than hire someone they don't. So this is why it's so important to make sure that you're out there um, networking and LinkedIn is a great place to start. Um, the college as well has events that happen um, throughout the year as well. So we have an events page on the Fanshawe College website that you can attend networking events. We just had a career fair that happened um, in March. And we are now for the first time gonna have another career fair that's gonna happen in the fall. And I think it's expected to be in September. So it's another great way where you can see we'll have posted on our, on our college website, all the employers that will be present. Um, another great way for networking, there are different networking events that you can attend as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit more into the workshop. So networking and the importance of networking, it's so important when you're networking because you're able to connect with people you know and ask for referrals and job leads. Some of you might have family and friends that are already here, maybe in London, Ontario, that might be able to help you um, in finding opportunities, uh, whether it's part-time or full-time opportunities. But the best thing you wanna do is start off with people that you know and then branch out. So when we talk about people you know, talk we're referring to friends and family um, and maybe your coworkers and eventually you're gonna start branching out as you become more comfortable. When you begin your classes, you're gonna start you know, reaching out to your faculty members, your classmates as well. And that's also how you're gonna build your network as well. Just remember that networking is always a two-way two street, so be sure to connect with the people that connect with you as well. And just remember, when it comes to networking, it can always be formal and informal. Um, often, you know, so just remember, and networking happens anywhere, anytime. Um, it can be online, it can be in person, it can be done by email. Um, so just remember, all those factors are all about networking. So networking activities that can be done virtually, um, sometimes within your program. So for example, in the School of IT, they just had a networking event on campus yesterday. Uh, I know the School of Business, for example, has one. If you're somebody who's coming to the London South campus, there are different networking events that happen there as well. Um, but utilize the career services event page. You're really gonna rely and engage with your faculty um, and your academic school. You might want to even maybe reach out to your teachers and ask to speak with maybe recent graduates. And you could ask them for what we call an informational interview. Um, and just to recap, an informational interview is not to ask for a job. It's kind of to ask um, about, you know, how, how did this particular individual get to where they got? If you wanted to send a resume, who would you attention your resume and cover letter to? You also want to be able, for those of you that have LinkedIn, uh, use LinkedIn. L LinkedIn is your, pro your professional networking. And that's another great tool about networking as well as having that LinkedIn account. And like I said, take advantage of networking events that happen through many different other social media platforms. Eventbrite is another one that has uh, many different networking events as well. And that's the end for myself. I think I'm just going to look at the chat box and see um, if I can answer a few of the questions, because I think some of them were the same. How can you take these workshops? So just as I showed you um, how to access the job site, you're gonna log into your Fanshawe Online account. And at the very top where you see resources, you're going to select Career, Co-op and CCR. And then just where you've seen the job postings, you're gonna see an icon that says events. And that's when you can register for the events online. Um, even if it's something that you're waiting until you come to Canada, you can't make it because it's not a, the best time, you can also access this information by registering and you can still receive a copy of this recording uh, and handout as well. Crystal, everyone gets a copy of this recording, correct? The recording of the session is posted to our YouTube page. Okay. I think what they're actually asking for is they want an actual copy of the slideshow. I can send it in a PDF version. Yes, I can send it to everyone in a PDF version. Perfect. Yeah, because you can just upload it right to the chat and they'll all get it. Okay, I can do that as well. Okay. And do you... A lot of questions just coming in there at once. <laughs> yeah. There are jobs provided on campus as well. And that information is also going to appear on the job site as well. 
We just have to remember in terms of on-campus jobs, there may not be as many as there would be, um, you know, outside of the college. Um, there are different positions. Many different faculties um, have students that they hire and they might be working 10, 12 hours. Um, it could be through the FSU, the Fanshawe Student Union, but yes, there are jobs on campus as well. Can we get jobs in mechanical engineering sector part-time? I'm sure you could. Um, I'm going to say the majority of jobs in that particular field are most likely going to be deemed as full-time opportunities. Um, maybe we'll chat a little bit with, with Robert about that as well and see if he has any suggestions with that. I will definitely share the slides. I just, I think there's one other question here about social insurance number. How many days before we can have our SIN after the application for this? Do we need to pay? You do not need to pay for your social insurance uh, number. Typically students should be getting their social insurance number uh, upon entry at the airport. Uh, for some of you, if that's not the case for you, then you would have to go to, um, you could apply online for your social insurance. Yeah, they've, they've really stopped giving out the SINs at the airport as often they have. because it's been so busy. So most of okay. the students are having to actually go to to uh, get it in person. And okay. we will have SIN clinics at each of the campuses as well during the start of term. Perfect. And I think there's one last one here. Can we apply for jobs at Fanshawe Careers before coming to Canada? You definitely can. You just have to be mindful, depending on how early you apply, if they want you to come in for an interview and you're not here yet. So we wouldn't suggest applying too, too early. You may want to, um, you know, maybe work on your cover letters and resumes from home. Because um, when you do come to Canada, you do need to factor in. You want to settle into the place of where you're living, get used to living in a new city as well. Um, and ultimately, you really want to make sure you're comfortable beginning your classes as well. So we always suggest you know, get settled in um, before you start applying, but there's still a lot you can do from your home country in terms of working on your cover letters and resume. I apologize for that. I was looking up the link for our videos and that's okay. Vertically. <laughs> I'm enrolled in London campus. Is it possible for me to transfer in Ontario campus? Mm. Um, if, the, if you have any questions regarding with regards to admissions, um, the best thing, if you did apply with an agency, the best thing would be to connect with your agency regarding that. I think I'll just type in the rest of the responses. I think I'll let Robert go ahead um, and do his part. Thanks very much. Does that sound good? Yeah. So Shannon, if you could uh, stop screen share. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Well, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Collins. I'm the Director of Workforce Development with the London Economic Development Corporation. And I just want to share, say to you, Congratulations on making two great choices already. The first one is you've chosen Canada. The second is you've chosen the great uh, community college, Fanshawe College, which has great connections to London employers. And I'm just gonna spend a few minutes both emphasizing some of the points that Shannon's made, but also introduce and, and, and let, let you think about resources in different ways. To let you know here at the LEDC, which is a small organization, I'm a former international student. Two of my colleagues are from India. Another one is from the Philippines. Um, and another one is from Colombia. And that's what you're going to find here in London. Increasingly, London is welcoming, accepting, and appreciating people with international talent and an experience. Our job is actually to bring new companies to London and to help existing companies that expand. And so what do they ask us? Not only is it access to land, not only is it access to our financial resources, 
But most importantly, you'll see that word there, workforce development. Are there the right people with the right skills? And increasing, increasingly, you will find that London really needs the talent that you're bringing and are further developing with the assistance of Fanshawe College. And it looks like um, somebody is having a great time somewhere. Uh, just to remind you, next slide, please. Just to remind you, look at London's key location in relationship to very large market share. You will see that we have 160 million consumers within a one day drive. That means we are the center for our, with, our, with our access to the US markets through our borders, through our highway system, our international airport, all of which are meaning that London has the full range of opportunities uh, uh, depending on what your career choice is and which program you're in. Moving to the next slide, please. Just to let you know that we are a city, but we're a city surrounded by some of the richest farmland in Canada. We're also, a, and we're at, by the way, we're almost at the most southerly uh, part of Canada. In fact, we're almost on a on a, a line of latitude with Madrid in Spain or, or Florence in Italy. So take that around the world. And so therefore we are a four season community. Today we have a slightly colder day. It's just below zero, but beautiful sunshine. And just to remind you that we offer uh, safe and affordable housing, top learning experiences, and we have a fast growing job markets in a variety of sectors, which I'm going to introduce you to in a second. Next slide, please. To let you know that our population has been rapidly expanding. However, we do not have enough. You'll see that we're also aging. That means there are people like me who will be leaving the labor market very shortly, creating more opportunities. Next slide, please. This is critically important when you're thinking about coming to Canada, and I'm going to mention some of the different companies and what they do, that we have a broad mix of companies, some with, with a larger with over 100 employees, but most are in that small and medium uh, size. One of the challenges is that job seekers often just go to the larger companies and don't explore those small and medium ones. So uh, one just caution, make sure that when you are job searching and you can, and I'll be showing you a business directory in a minute, make sure that you don't just pick the large ones, also look for the small and medium, which are creating many, many opportunities. Next slide, please. We have a full range of companies and I'm, and, and we have everything from the, the, the largest accounting and financial companies in London. We have companies like 3M, which has a headquarters here and a factory. Um, we have Carfax, which is giving information on the automobile industry. And in fact, the Carfax group of companies, which are now owned by Standard & Poor, uh, that they are looking for data scientists. They're looking for uh, uh, Soft, uh, people with software skills, as well as marketing and communications. Uh, and, and parallel to that is another company called JD Power. CDK Global is one of four companies which are doing clinical trials in London. Labatt is a major brewery owned, uh, which distributes beer from across the country, but we also have many, many uh, uh, custom breweries here in town. Masco, which is a manufacturing company, they're making parts uh, for, um, uh, for, your, for your bathtub, your showers, your sinks, et cetera, because London also has a whole housing um, products uh, stream. McCormick's makes uh, spices, which are being used across, their, they're being accessed from your countries, but they're then being distributed has test kitchens in London and a, 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 a feeding everything from hospitals to universities to all of the, uh, the hospitality sector. 
we're also a home um, of, of insurance companies. So yet again, they're looking for people with fine, across all of these sectors, they're looking for people with marketing and com communication skills, finance skills, general business skills, et cetera. And by the way, all of these are, are being supported by a wonderful healthcare system. We uh, have increasing needs for childcare workers. And by the way, there's both the opportunity to, to work part-time in both before and after school programs, depending on your skills and experience. Moving to the next slide, please. So as Shannon mentioned, uh, the importance of networking is still being emphasized. That word of mouth, those personal contacts are still critical, but uh, more and more the online job boards and postings are being used by every size of employer. As well, they're posting on social, uh, social media and their company's own internet site. So when you start to that voyage of discovery, which Shannon's been urging you to do, make sure that you, that you like uh, the social media that different companies are having. Bookmark some of those companies that you really like so that they know that you're paying attention to them. Make sure that you, you, are, you are really reviewing those job boards and postings. And I'm gonna give you a bit, few more tips about that in a minute. And really importantly, when, especially if you're looking for a part-time work, please, um, please do look at, at where employers are located and where their opportunities are. And, and it's very worthwhile, especially for the small and medium ones, for you actually to knock on the door, to walk in and, and introduce yourself having dressed appropriately, um, et cetera, for a job setting. This way you actually, people can see how keen and enthusiastic you are. And that especially pays off for the, for, for the part-time work environment. Next slide, please. To remind you, uh, please do that research before applying. Many of the employers have an, a client tracking system so if you've put in, especially the larger ones, if you have put in your resume and it wasn't the best resume, they will say, oh, we've already looked at it next time you apply. And that might make it less likely for you to actually get that interview and that opportunity. So really make sure you've done the research before applying. As Shannon mentioned, make sure that you've got that good resume that you, and it's word perfect because sometimes that and offend the interviewer um, and, and or screen you out. Please do make sure that, that in your social media, you do that your, that your photos that can be accessed from the website are your professional ones and not too personal. Enough said on that. Please, uh, as Shannon said, do really make sure that when you have that LinkedIn profile, it is really professional and really highlights those, those both those technical skills that you have, but also those, those interpersonal skills and some of the results you've achieved in your past lives. Uh, make sure that your social media is appropriate because people often, employers do often check your Facebook and other accounts uh, prior to, to uh, accepting you for an interview. Most importantly, and this is often a missed step by job seekers, every time that you make a contact and have an interaction with somebody, make sure you're keeping a spreadsheet uh, of, of the company, the contacts, what they've said to you. So you can always follow up and make sure that you've got that sort of good connection that you, you've actually making sure that every, every couple of months and so on, you're staying in touch with them. But more of that in a moment. Next slide, please. Uh, as Shannon mentioned, the uh, Fanshawe job portal itself is a very rich and very useful um, tool. It is fed in part by B London Tech Jobs, London Manufacturing Jobs, and, and soon to join them, London Health Jobs, which are sites that actually we run from this site, which we run from the London Economic Development Corporation. Each of these make it very easy to search and see the range of companies locally and the kind of job titles in the, each of these sectors. They actually feed the workforcedevelopment.ca uh, site as well. 
And one of the really nice features of that site is it actually has a mapping function. So that what you can do there is you can see where where is that job, where are those jobs in relationship to where you're living and to where the college is. So if you're at the South London campus, you can search. Initially, you could look at what are all the jobs around the South London campus or the downtown campus or St. Thomas campus or Simcoe or, um, or Woodstock. Uh, so the, or the main campus on Oxford Street. So you can actually see how long it's going to take you to get to your full or part-time job. It, it also could help you with actually your, the, your location choice uh, for where you actually want to live in relationship to those op opportunities. So you can see that. And also, by the way, we have a business directory, which is from our, our website. And, and that also sh can show you where those companies are in proximity to uh, Fanshawe College. The, um, if by any chance you're looking, by the way, to work in the not-for-profit sector, a useful site is Charity Village, which also has a range of the not-for-profit jobs. One of the things that everybody asks me, how much do jobs pay? Are they good companies? And, and, and if I take a job, job, and I'm now thinking about you being post-graduation, post if I take a job, well, what's the cost of living like in a community? Well, a very useful site is called salaryexpert.com because that will help you look at both. If you're, if you're being paid $80,000 in a job, how affordable is it in terms of the uh, housing costs, et cetera? So I find that that route really helps you make your make, make your, uh, helps you with your decision making. And by the way, I wouldn't mention it if, of course, London didn't come off very well by using that tool. So uh, please, as I say, start by by looking at uh, the Fanshawe College job portal, but do look at some of these other specialty ones, which help you see things uh, succinctly and easily. And as I mentioned, the mapping function really helps you with the location of employment opportunities. Next slide, please. So a reminder, please make sure that you, that you have a really good standard um, uh, resume and, and that you get some really good advice from Fanshawe College about your cover letter. But also make sure that, you, that when you're applying, the, you customize it to the employer so you're demonstrating to the employer that you've done, done your research. Really do look at the job descriptions thoroughly. And you'll have, have workshops at Fanshawe that will help you really dissect what a job, what's, what, what the skill sets an employer is really prioritizing in that job description. How can you then match up your prior experience that you're bringing with you, but also your program experience from Fanshawe to put your best foot forward? Really do read the job descriptions uh, thoroughly because that's an often is a mistake that job seekers make. So my next is I always think it's wonderful if you can actually look at the key sectors, the skill set you have. You uh, you look at some say maybe three of the larger companies that you may want to work for, but please add seven of those smaller or medium sized ones to really explore those, to bookmark them, to follow them, and to really try to build that connection. And you do that through both inter information interviews, which yes, again, Fanshawe College has great workshops on, and networking. Now let's get into the networking side. Whenever you're meeting somebody, you're trying to actually establish that relationship. And so this is how you how when I think about how you 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 want to soften up that relationship with that individual. Here's some quick tips. So remember this: soften, to smile genuinely, to ask open-ended questions. I you're asking a question whether you're not going to get a yes or a no answer. You're going to broaden and and, and uh, the interaction. Make sure that you actually. Uh, pay attention to your personal space with the person. Really lean in to listen to their conversation carefully. Make sure that you're paying attention to that personal space. For those of you who, um, I'm an Anglo, okay, which means that I'm a little bit more formal. So I like a little bit of space between myself and the job seeker or the other person I'm meeting. 
So bear that in mind that each, each of us, both culturally and by gender, will be a little more less comfortable or more, com uh, or, or more comfortable depending on that, that space. It's your job as a networker to make sure that the other person is comfortable and you're paying attention to that. Also, maintain eye contact with them as much as you're, you're comfortable. And, and also that can be a, a, both a gender and a cultural issue to pay attention to. So making sure, yet again, your responsibility to make sure the other person is comfortable. Next is use their name. Now, some of you will come from, from different parts of the world with names which we, not all of us are familiar with pronouncing. And you will find the same with employers. Employers will give you names which you may not be comfortable, necessarily comfortable with pronouncing. Make sure that you try to use their, their real name. Make sure that you actually practice with them about how to pronounce it. Because that then, and, and then try to use their name at least three times in the conversation so you can remember them and you're building then an identity about them. Now, when you've met with somebody uh, and you might've got their business card or you might've got their email, make sure that you follow up and to make sure that you have, have shared with them what you learned from the conversation. Thank you for sharing with, with me that uh, it's really the, the way you, uh, the extra enthusiasm that you bring to work that was really important in you moving forward. Whatever that key ingredient was, that best advice, make sure that you actually share that with them. Um, next slide, please. The same, of course, applies to actually how you're, you're, you're if you're just connecting with somebody, having found them through LinkedIn, um, make sure that you use the same kind of approach when you're, when you're approaching them to make that contact um, by email uh, or through social media. So think about how your, your, your introduction, the title to that email is warm and welcoming. Think of, also ask some open-ended questions. Bear in mind the people you're connecting with uh, are very, very busy. So try to keep, you, don't go on and on about yourself or the situation. Just try to keep your questions short and to the point and be diplomatic in terms of how you're expressing them. You know, in other words, is your industry, don't say things like, is your industry a really good industry to work for? As opposed to saying, why do you, another way of saying that would be, could you tell me why your industry is such a good industry to work for? Otherwise, make sure that you're not implying that it's not a good industry. Make sure that, uh, that if you, uh, when, when you get a response, make sure that you, um, you give a, uh, a response uh, quickly uh, uh, and energetically, uh, and, and, and don't expect an employer to necessarily respond to you right away. They're busy people. So, so don't just hound them. And of course, yet again, use their name frequently in, in, what, in, in your interactions. So the same uh, method, uh, soften, applies to both. Next slide, please. So this question, when and how should I start job searching? Well, I think you should start job searching by looking at the sites and the information later today. In other words, job searching uh, starts well before you start your program and continues throughout. It's very easy to get distracted by your studies because they're, they're really interesting. But the important thing is to continue to, to allocate time every week to, uh, to your job search, to exploring those opportunities in your particular sector. I'm going to share uh, now just one last thing. I have a quick summary of, what, um, of some of the information I've shared. Uh, and it also has some of the links. So yes, you're gonna get a copy of this, of, of this uh, presentation, but in addition, if you would like a copy of this, Quick London Facts, please write and just say, rave card please in the title and, go, and uh, send that to info, I-N-F-O at L-E-D-C dot com and we'll get one off to you very quickly. So I look forward to your questions. What are we getting?
Okay, just getting into <laughs> the chat now. I feel like the majority of the questions when Robert was speaking, I've answered some. Okay. They're looking for PowerPoint presentations from previous Fanshawe Care series. Mm -hmm. There is one here that they've been talking about the number of hours that they can work. Um, yes, immigration has made some changes to the hours. However, that doesn't apply to everyone. If you are in school full time, it's really difficult to be working full time and going to school full time. Your primary focus should be school as an international school as an international student. So typically an average student should not be working more than 20 some hours a week. Um, to fulfill your requirements because you are here to study and that should be first and foremost the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to, if I could emphasize that for a second. Yes. Um, uh, it, uh, my understanding is that that you have to maintain your full-time student status. Um, so be very, very cautious of that. Be very cautious if you start to work too much that you're not able to keep your studies up and, and progress. And remember that employers want to know um, how well you did in your program often. They'll ask you that question, right? So uh, don't sacrifice. And I understand many of you may need some employment and it's very good for you, for those of you who are not English speakers to get part-time work because you can actually then really improve your English skills. Actually, I'm gonna share another tip, um, which is what, the wonderful thing about Fanshawe College is you get the chance to meet uh, people from around the world please try to make sure that you are connecting with others, not just from your own culture and your own language, and you're really practicing to make sure that your, your English language skills are really um, uh, advanced as you progress through Fanshawe. This will really help you, um, as well as really getting to understand uh, uh, people from other parts of the world and what, uh, uh, most of our employment settings now, people are uh, have people from every culture present. So the more you you're understanding, the more you can work well together, the better you are then for 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 from an employment perspective. And Robert, can you just provide the email address again to get the the sure. radio brochure? Sure, and uh, I'll put it in the chat. Okay, oh, I was just about to put it in there, so perfect. Yeah, well, okay, well, thank you. I'll let you do it. Info at ledc.com. And then if you just say rave card, please, in the title, we'll get it off to you. R-A-V-E card. Oh. <laughs> R-E-V-E? R-A-V-E. Super, thank you. You're welcome. What other questions? There's one student with a question here. Where can I find information regarding certification for engineering jobs? I'm a, I'm a mechanical engineer from Columbia, and that was from Catherine. Um, one of the one of the uh, way is to go onto the Professional Engineers of Ontario and to look at their site. Then they will help you look, you can see then what, um, what's required. Uh, often you will have to have, have had your qualifications from back home uh, evaluated against an international um, standard such as uh, World Educational Services. And then they will look at, at what's required. Um, and help, and you, and 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 there's a way of 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 becoming an engineer in training, etc. Now the advantage of some of the the if I don't know which programs you're taking at Fanshawe, but the, there's also Fanshawe has a lot of engineering related programs, and your faculty will be very familiar with that process. Perfect. Thank you. Trying to see if there's any other ones. Yeah, it looks like one just came in asking about how um, is it difficult to get a, a, um, a part time job in the uh, yeah. part time tech tech jobs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, less 
It, it used to be difficult. It's it's less difficult now, and I'll explain why. If you were to go on to uh, workforcedevelopment.ca, that site, which is an aggregator, it pulls from multiple sites. It pulls from Indeed. It it, it pulls from our job boards and others. You will see that there's over there's five thousand. Well, there's over five thousand five hundred job titles open uh, as of today. So that tell and and by the way, we have an unemployment rate of five point one, which is very low. One almost a historically low over the last forty years. Okay, what does that mean? Employers need skills. And employers are more increasingly recognizing that um, you're bringing with you some very, uh, some very useful skills. So in, in tech, some in manufacturing are prepared to look at, and some, by the way, some manufacturers work on 12 hour shifts so that in fact you could work you know a friday saturday sunday in fact actually then you have a, well it depends on the on the rules by the way uh, right now there's a different rule set but you could actually work um significantly for for an employer in some of those key sectors uh, because they need your skill set um and by the way uh when when you're here uh, and it depends when, when and if they revert to the old rules. You're allowed to work um, under the old rules of 20 hours a week. When you, whenever there was a break from school, you could work full time. And when, whenever you're not studying, i.e. if it was a, you're in a two-year program and there's a summer break, you can work full time. So bear that in mind. Another thing, by the way, and, I've, and I'll share this tip with you, the sum of the programs you're in are, are, are co-op programs, which is a wonderful opportunity for, for you to get to know an employer. And often through a co-op program, then they, they're keen to have you as a part-time as you continue your studies. Or if your co-op is at the end of your program, don't just apply for co-op opportunities, apply for full-time knowing that then you can go in as a co-op student and then continue after that. So think about that as well, depending on your program. Perfect, thank you guys both so much. This is so helpful. Hopefully all of the students attending and those that watch it really get a lot of information about how to network and how to job find and stuff because I think that's a really important uh, component of uh, them choosing to come to Canada. Crystal, the only two things that I can see in the chat box is they're asking about accommodations. Mm -hmm. I see some are Toronto campus, some are uh, Simcoe campus, some are other campuses they're wanting to know. So we can't release, you know, which students are going to what campuses you will meet um, your classmates on the day of orientation. Simcoe, it's a very, um, you know, close-knit community as well. So, you know, you'll get to know your, your faculty and your classmates really well. And Toronto has its own uh, campus as well, and there's services there, but we can't release students' names, unfortunately, um, it's for you guys to connect with them ahead of time. But there is a question about accommodation, and I think we've covered everything. Yes, we did. We did have um, a session the other day with Glenn Matthews about accommodations, um, more so uh, what to look for or what to look out, out for, because we can't tell you where to find the housing. It's kind of through the searches and stuff. And those videos, the videos from the last four days should be posted today. So okay. you should be able to review that. And if you are still having issues with it, you can send an email to Fanshawe Cares at FanshaweC.ca, and we can send you out some links to searches and stuff. But just can I just reemphasize yeah. wherever you are, whether it's in Simcoe or Toronto, do have a look at that sort of that that the combination of, of where you're going to study, where you're going to live versus where the job opportunities are. So think think about those because it might be better to spend twenty dollars more a month, being closer, if it's going to save you half an hour a day. Think about those things, right? Think about that combination. Uh, of how it works. Often people will, uh, I, I see some who spend, you know, much too long getting to, to, to the college 
that then they don't need to uh, if they'd have really thought thought those those things through a little bit. Great point. There is one quick question there, just asking about um, how to uh, network using uh, LinkedIn. So, so like, what sort of things should should they write? Uh, well, let, well, let's start by by trying to identify. You're, you're trying to find. Uh, you're, you're you're now saying I'm going to, when when you've graduated from Fanshawe, what are, what are the, that skill that combination that job role you're looking for? Right. So that's one. Then you're looking for somebody who is the manager of that job role. So what title would they have? Right. So um, so the persons you're trying to network with are people who who are, are in a position of hiring, not not the human resources person necessarily. It's the actual manager who supervises that title uh, that, that you want. That way, then you're then you're connecting, saying, "I am going to be very shortly X Y Z. I want to. What are the when you're looking to find somebody who's successful in the role? What are the th top three things you're looking for? In other words, you're asking a specific question that can help you. Okay. Then, by the way, you follow up and say, "By the way, I have been working on." If they're saying really. Not only is it just you graduate from this program well, but you need to have the following. Well, let, you can then say, this is how I used your advice to, to make sure that I'm a really good team player or I execute on projects well. Let me tell you about my time management. Like in other words, if that's what they've said. So in other words, you, 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 you uh, ask useful questions to you, but then you constantly follow up. Does that help? Shannon, would you like to build on that? I think you've said everything perfectly, Robert. I appreciate that. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything that I've missed. There seems to be a large interest in this rave card, so I think you'll be getting lots of emails coming your way. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to go have to, my, my, by the way, for, for those of you from the Philippines, my colleague uh, from, the, from the Philippines is the one who, who will receive those in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and Varum said thank you so much I think you answered his LinkedIn question perfectly I think we covered everyone I don't think we've missed anything I think we're good yeah it's been a really great session thank you both so much thank you it was a pleasure um, co-hosting with you Robert okay, thank you always lovely to, to see you uh, and I look forward to meeting in person someday yes uh, and every, everybody, so congratulations. You've chosen Canada. You've chosen Fanshawe. And for those of you in Simcoe and Toronto, choose London. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And have a good rest of your day or evening. And hopefully we'll see you back for tomorrow. We have uh, Laura with us from uh, Fanshawe Friends. So she's going to be talking to us about ways to get involved. So thank you, everyone. And we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Take care, everyone. Bye.